Uh, it's welcome aboard the International Space Station first. Uh, it's a great place to be, a great place to live, a great place to work. Continuing on the theme of are they stuck, are they stranded, or are they just enjoying an extended stay at the International Space Station? Well, enough with the speculation. NASA astronauts Butch Wilmore and Sunita Williams provided an update from the ISS after their return to Earth on Boeing's Starliner capsule has been indefinitely postponed. So you can see them up there, they're doing okay, but we still don't know when they're gonna return, and this has definitely been pushed out several weeks at this point. This is because Starliner has helium leaks that cropped up during their ride to the ISS. Not only helium leaks, but issues with the thrusters. One of the most common things that I see floating around social media is that SpaceX will have to rescue these astronauts and they maintain that they don't think that's going to happen. They think that they will still return home on Starliner. Let's listen. Do you have any qualms whatsoever about returning in the Starliner yourself? Um, why or why not? You know, Marsha, you know, we've, we've been through a lot of simulations for this spacecraft to, you know, go through all sorts of iterations of failures. And I think where we are right now and what we know right now and how the spacecraft flew as it was coming in to do the docking as Butch described. Um, I, I feel confident that if we had to, if there was a problem with the International Space Station, we can get in our spacecraft and we can undock, talk to our team and figure out the best way to come home. Um, yeah, we've, like I said, we've practiced a lot. So I have a feeling, I have a, a real good feeling in my heart that uh, the spacecraft will, br will bring us home, no problem. But like Butch said, we're learning now to make, to optimize our specific situation and make sure that we know everything about it. You know, if we just came home, we'd lose the SM and then we wouldn't be able to go through all this testing and understand about our spacecraft. I envision that we'll still do testing when we undock and make sure, before we undock actually first to open the helium valves and then secondly once we undock to make sure everything is working correctly um, as we as it's planned from what they found out during the thruster testing. So I have confidence, Butch has confidence, um, we're here on the space station with our safe haven of Starliner. And I will add this that we were able to rendezvous and dock because of the team effort uh, guys like Dean Lenort and our, uh, our propulsion officer and Ed Van Sice, our, our flight director, and the team on the ground is uh, working together. What we did, taking over manual control while they assessed the situation and coming to the conclusion that we could re-enable those, those RCS jets that had failed and then get us here safely, as I said, with the precision still there with some degraded thrusters. Uh, and we feel confident that this team will do the same on the way home. So at this point, they don't think that SpaceX is going to be needed to take them home, but they could be stuck in space until August. The theme for this mission is that it is just simply a test and they're continuing testing Starliner while Butch and Sonny are safely inside the ISS. As understanding and appreciating everything you've said about the performance of Starliner, it is still billions of dollars uh, over budget, years behind schedule. It seems it's been snake bit at every turn. Are you confident in the performance of the ship for future missions as well? Yeah, you know, that's a fair question. Uh, I can tell you that uh, this is, this is the, the world of test. This is a tough business that we're in. Human spaceflight is not easy in any regime. And there have been multiple issues with every spacecraft that's ever been designed. And that's the nature of what we do. You know, that mantra you've heard, failure is not an option. That's why we are staying here now. Uh, we, we did have some degradation and, uh, in our thrusters, and we know that. And that's why we're staying, because we're going to test it. That's what we do. That's what we do in this business. We're going to get the data that we need to help inform our decisions so we make the right decisions. And that's why we feel confident. We've got a history of doing that going back decades in human spaceflight. And uh, that gives us confidence now that it will continue. We are very close and uh, friends with those that are making these decisions. And we trust them. We trust their integrity. We trust their technology technical as, uh, acumen, and uh, we trust that uh, the tests that we're doing are the ones that we need to do to get the right answers, to give us the data that we need to come back. Butch had plenty of amazing things to say about Starliner, and he's traveled to the ISS on different spacecraft. He said that Boeing spacecraft handled really nicely. But it was truly amazing the precision that this spacecraft held. 
And then we got into day two, the start of day two. It was the same starting off. And then we did have some failures, as we're all aware. We had some, lost a, 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 an RCS jet, and then we lost a, another one. And then you could tell the thrust, uh, the, the control, the capability was degraded. The handling qualities were not the same. But thankfully, uh, we had uh, practiced and we had gotten certified for manual control. And so we took over manual control for over an hour mm -hmm. on the V-bar, the axis where we actually rendezvous with the space station. And for over an hour while the, the teams on the ground did their troubleshooting, and we got a couple of jets back. And then from that point on, you could tell that the thrust was degraded. At the time, we didn't know why. Obviously, uh, that, that, since the failures had just happened, you could tell it was degraded, but it was still impressive. Uh, let me give you an example. Coming into docking, those final 10 meters, um, we have a tolerance when we actually connect with the space station of five degrees in attitude and about four inches in position. And so Starliner came right down in automatic mode at this point and right down the middle, even with the degraded thrusters, which was truly impressive, knowing what we know now and not knowing what we knew, not knowing it then, but what we know now, truly impressive that even in the, with degraded thrusters, the capability was there to actually dock that precise. Now, keep in mind, these two have been up there since June 6th after the first crew docking of Boeing's next generation spacecraft Starliner happened. They were only supposed to last about a week up there, but the undocking was obviously delayed a lot because of those faulty thrusters and small helium leaks. NASA has said a few times that they want to collect data and they're still performing tests to ensure that the capsule would perform as expected. So if there was an emergency situation, NASA is confident Starliner will be safe for an emergency evacuation but hold on, not so fast. Let's keep testing it. Steve Stitch, who is NASA's commercial crew program manager, said, quote, some of the data suggests optimistically maybe it's by the end of July, but we'll just follow the data each step at a time. He also added a routine ISS crew rotation in mid-August will be a back end to the mission to avoid overcrowding in orbit. Right now, the space station is occupied by the regular crew of seven in addition to both and sunny. So for now, they have sufficient supplies and resources, and there is currently no risk due to the amount of people up there. So we keep hearing the word test. What exactly has been done? Well, in this time, engineers have been able to perform ground fire evaluations of replica thrusters at NASA's White Sands Test Facility in New Mexico. They've also been able to close out the helium leak issues Steve believes could be signed off by the end of this week. But reporters in this interview criticized Starliner, bringing up the fact that it's years behind schedule and over $1.5 billion over budget. Starliner is, of course, offering NASA a second private commercial crew alternative for transportation of astronauts to the ISS, which before June 5th, that was all being handled by SpaceX and the Dragon capsule. So as it stands, NASA's Steve Stitch maintains, quote, we have two vehicles that we can use to return crew. And so we have a little bit more time to go through the data and then make a decision. But the prime option today is to return Butch and Sonny on Starliner. Right now, we don't see any reason that wouldn't be the case. There's really been no discussion with sending another dragon to rescue the Starliner crew. So he maintains that they haven't even talked about that as a possibility which does surprise me because it seems that the whole internet is already speculating that that will become a rescue mission. So I want to know what you guys think in the comments after hearing from Butch and Sonny. Are you more assured that they will be coming home on Starliner? Yeah, it, we are having a great time here on ISS. You know, Butch and I have been up here before and it feels uh, like coming back home. It feels good to float around. It feels good to be in space and work up here with the International Space Station team. So yeah, it's great to be up here. So I, I'm not complaining. Butch isn't complaining that we're here for a couple weeks, um, extra weeks. Uh, I mean, your question is full of speculation. I really don't know personally exactly what could come out of there um, that would give us a huge amount of pause. What we want to what we want to know is that the thrusters can perform. Um, if whatever their percentage of thrust is, we can put it into a package that will get us a deorbit burn. That's the main purpose that we need the service module to get us a good deorbit burn, so that we can come back 
you know, our OMAC thrusters, our bigger ones, uh, we haven't really had a problem with them. So we, you know, we are very confident in the deorbit burn capability with the number of OMACs that we have. It's just that attitude from the RCS thrusters. So, um, you know, with a little bit, if, it, if they are degraded, we'll find out if they really are degraded, um, what that combination is to get us the right attitude. And I, I think with the number of jets we have, we're probably going to find something really positive. So beyond um, guessing, I, I think that's as good as I'm going to give you as an answer. Yeah, one other thing, that during the burn itself, uh, once we get to the burn, we're, we're pretty much home free as long, as long as the old max uh, continue to operate, and there's no reason they wouldn't, because the old max can maintain the attitude themselves during the burn. So that's another added feature that is in our in our favor. And do you think that they'll be coming home before August, or is this going to be a very extended stay and an impromptu vacation in space? Let me know what you think in the comments. I just wanted to provide you with this update. Also, in case you missed it, I will be reopening my website with merchandise from Flight 4. So this is the design for Flight 4, and I made sure to include the bit about the little flap that could because that was such an important part of the success of Flight 4. And we could be gearing up for Starship's Flight 5 as soon as early August, where SpaceX will attempt to catch the booster with the chopsticks, which will be totally crazy. So if you guys want to support the channel, I will leave the link to the shirts in the description. Thank you so much for watching Ellie in Space.